Well, guess what, everybody? You're going to be able to enjoy Tower Topics in a whole new way. Hello, everybody. Alongside Don Helbig, I'm Ryan Sir, and this is Tower Topics. Tower Topics is a podcast by Kings Island fans for Kings Island fans because that's who we are and that's who we care about. So, Ryan, some really exciting news. You and I have been wanting to talk about this for the past few weeks, and now's the time to do it. Yeah, we've been we've been talking about this for a long time. And, you know, we've had a lot of our listeners and stuff asking how to get involved and how to support the show. Um, and we I know that randomly, like somebody sent you a check and stuff like a year ago. We don't want anything like that. Let's make it quin pro quo. So today we are officially announcing effective immediately. We're going to have Tower Topics YouTube memberships. Now, YouTube memberships are going to be the new awesome way to really connect with us and be involved with Tower Topics. So we have three different levels, all right? So the first level, we're talking about being a silver member. So a silver member, um, they get certain, this is our base level, and they get uh, priority reply to comments, early access to all of our videos. Uh, and they're going to be able to be involved with members only live streams. So that's the silver membership. You want to step it up to gold? We got gold for you. Next up, gold. So gold gets all the benefits of silver, except uh, they're also going to get a exclusive free Tower Topics t-shirt after 12 consecutive months of being a gold member. All right. Uh, they're going to be involved in live streams, early access to content. Uh, but we're also going to have a title screen at the end where we give a shout out to the gold members. So that's going to be the gold members. And then, Don, do you have any guess what could possibly be above a gold member? What's well, the most ironic be... thing that we could name the highest tier for the most a, loyal Power Topics members? A prestige member. That's right, Don prestige don't be fooled what's on the website is what you're actually going to get but a, pre a prestige member is actually uh, going to get all the benefits uh of the previous tiers except after two months they're going to get a special exclusive prestige member t-shirt that's after two months and we will say your name at that we'll give you a shout out a verbal shout out at the end of the show so, and the thing about these t-shirts that you're talking about, these are not the regular Tower Topics t-shirts that we've been selling over the past year. These are exclusive to these different levels, right? That's right. They're going to have these new logos, and uh, we're actually going to have various exclusive merchandise that's only available to Tower Topics members. And, you know, we're going to work on adding more and more as time goes on to uh, thank you for giving back to the show. But yeah, and you talk about yeah that exclusive type of content too. Some of that is some of the best things that Ryan and I talk about is things that happen either before the show or after the show. Those kind of clips will be uh, made available to you. So it's just going to be a lot of things like that. Yeah, and it's uh, it's there. There have been so many times that you you and I have recorded. We we record for it's a long night on Wednesday nights when we record these things because we often do attractions group pick six and then three tower topics. Uh, but even so, you know the camera stopped rolling and we start talking about like, do you remember when Son of Beast did this or whatever? And we end up having a forty five minute conversation that just doesn't meet the criteria of what we had for the shows. But what we're gonna do is we're just gonna keep it recording. We'll upload that in the raw. Uh, additionally, we're looking at doing various uh, like subset shows where we're working on a show where it's going to be kind of like pick six, but we'll just talk about news around Six Flags. Yeah, what the you Six know? Flags Roundup kind of a thing. So, yeah, so if you if you've got the you know the Six Flags uh, or the Kings Island Pass with the All Park Passport, you go to the different Six Flags parks. You want to know what's going on at those parks. We'll have different uh, you know uh, news updates. Uh, talking about what's a new attraction, you know, some different things like that for you. Uh, just going to be really a lot of fun for Ryan and I to kind of expand a little bit uh, past Kings Island with that particular segment. Yeah, absolutely. So it's very, very exciting. So if you can support the show in this manner, thank you very much. We really appreciate your support. If you can't, 
we still appreciate you. We still thank you for watching the show and listening to the show. Yeah, just an alternative for you. Not something that you have to do, just uh, an additional option. So if you love what we do at Tower Topics, we feel you're really going to love what, what happens with these uh, three different levels and the exclusive content that you're going to get there. Uh, again, you know, something that uh, is not going to be uh, the same as the Tower Topics episodes, just things that, uh, you know, is going to be exclusive depending on that level of membership that you have. Sure. And if you can think of any benefits that you would like to see with Tower Topics memberships, drop us a comment below. Let us know what you would like to see. What makes it worth your time? Because we're all about this. We, we really want to, you know, make the show interactive and keep it growing. It's like the, the growth has been off the charts, but this is just another step in the right direction. Um, so to clarify before people, yeah, you know, if anyone mentions this in the comments, it means they didn't read the book. Tower Topics, the Monday, Wednesday, Friday things, they'll always be free. You know, we're not going to pay all well that. This is extra stuff, extra benefits for people that want to be more involved. Never, never heard before stories that Ryan and I will share with that exclusive content. Yeah. So there's a link in the description for joining the uh, Tower Tops membership program, Tower Topics membership program. So uh, thank you all in advance for, uh, you know, your support of the show. But Don, another way to support the show is with a sweatshirt. Yes, it's that time of the year. Temperatures have dropped. If you're going to be visiting the parks, you know, the remainder of the, the fall and into Winterfest, what better way to do it than with a Tower Topics full zip hooded sweatshirt. It's got the Tower Topics logo on the chest. It's got the, a big logo on the back of the shirt. comes in that ash gray color. It's a very comfortable, comfortable shirt. Uh, it's just $50. That includes shipping. And if you would like to have one of these sweatshirts, you can get that by messaging us through our X, which is tower underscore topics. We'll send you the QR code, or you can email me at Don Helbig at themeparksbydon.com, and I'll send you back the QR code. And once the transaction has been complete, it only takes a matter of days uh, to get your shirt. I think you're going to absolutely love this shirt. Again, very comfortable, uh, just, a, just a great shirt. And if you're a fan of the show, you know, I think it would, uh, and you have with the Tower Topics t-shirt, uh, you know, this is a nice compliment, uh, compliment for that. Yeah. Any other, any other jacket that you wore with the Tower Topics t-shirt would really clash with it. So I'm glad that you're doing this service for risking the fashion faux pas out there, but Hey, we'll be right back with your stories. Okay, today's story is from Lisa K. from Camp Denison Township in Ohio. Back in the summer of 2009, when Diamondback was the shiny new ride at Kings Island, I find myself in, found myself in an awkward situation. At 19 years old, I had never been on a roller coaster yet. No, not one. My, uh, my friends had spent the entire day hyping up this new monster coaster, convincing me to ride uh, to face my fears. Somehow, I let them talk me into it, and before I knew it, I was strapped into the front row of Diamondback, heart pounding uh, in my throat. As the train clicked up the hill, I realized I'd made a terrible mistake. The hill seemed to climb forever, and I distinctly remember asking Ron, my friend beside me, if the entire park could hear me panic breathing. Uh, then came the drop, that glorious, terrifying, what seemed to be never-ending drop. I screamed, Ron screamed, everybody screamed. And by the time the train came back into the station, I felt an overwhelming sense of relief, a very warm, soggy kind of relief. I had peed my pants. The sheer horror hit me instantly. Here I was, 19 years old, in front of hundreds of people with soaked jeans. I was mortified. Ron noticed right away, thanks, buddy, and his laughter didn't help. You good? He asked through, through his fits of giggles. Good was not the word I would have used at the moment. I bolted straight to the gift shop, bought the first pair of sweatpants I could find, and awkwardly tossed my soaked jeans and underwear into the trash, trying to act like it was no big deal. I rejoined my friends, fully expecting them to tease me for the rest of the day, but surprisingly, they were cool about it. You survived Diamondback, Ron said, and suddenly the embarrassment melted away. And you know what? I had loved that ride. 
the adrenaline rush, the speed, the weightlessness, it was like nothing I'd ever felt before. So we kept going. I hopped on the beast, screamed my lungs out on the racer and took Vortex like a pro. My fear of roller coasters, gone, completely obliterated. By the end of the day, I had transformed from the girl who had never ridden a coaster to a full-on enthusiast, hungry for more. That day was the start of a new obsession. Now I travel all over, hunting down new coasters and chasing the next big thrill. So yeah, I pee my pants on Diamondback, but hey, we all start somewhere, right? I mean, the important part is she didn't pee herself on every ride because she would have had to buy sweatpants every time. Or she could have had a good cycle where by the time she rode the beast and peed her pants, then her jeans would have been dry. So she just changes out of those, put the sweatpants in a locker. You know, she goes and rides Vortex. She pees her pants again, goes, gets her sweatpants out. They're dry. See what I'm going at, Don? Uh, you know, um, I, what are, you know, I mean, it, it's what I, what I like about that story is that, um, their friends were supportive afterward. Yes. Yeah. You know, and that allowed her to ride other rides that day. So while she loved Diamondback, you know, that ride, I think if had they been a little different, you know, toward her and, you know, was making fun of her and that she might've wanted to go home and never come yeah. back to a park or something like that. So what I like is that um, they were cool about it and she ended up riding these other rides. I think you mentioned the beast and uh, the racer and vortex and that. And, and all of a sudden now there's this new obsession to, to wanting to ride rides. And, you know, now it's, uh, you know, going around and, and collecting, you know, credits all over the place. So, uh, that's what I like about it is that the friends were supportive and, you, you know, somebody that had never been on the ride before, you know, panicked, scared to death. And, and now they're a big time coaster fan. Yeah, I agree. I mean, cause I think that if her friends had mocked her for the rest of the night, she'd probably just associate Diamondback and all of roller coasters with embarrassment and stuff like that. But, uh, at least you're to the point now where you can share the story with us. We can read it publicly, you know, so uh lisa from camp denison uh i'm glad you got over it i'm glad you're still chasing your thrills and i'm glad your pants are staying dry nowadays question though are those were those sweatpants like diamondback sweatpants they used to have a, a like these black sweatpants had diamondback going down the leg yeah and that they were really cool um so you know i i, I wish we'd known what kind of uh sweatpants those were because they had ones that had like king's island going down the leg and mm -hmm. that, the diamondback ones looked really good when those those were available back in 2009 yeah, the, I do remember those being cool. And it seems like they come out every because Kings Island, like a lot of other parks, randomly finds boxes of inventory sometimes. And I bought a Banshee Brew magnet uh, like last year. They You haven't had Banshee Brew in a decade. You know, and they were like, yeah, we found these in the back. I'm like, all right. Yeah. So it was like a few bucks. But uh, we want to hear your stories, uh, story, not necessarily your pee stories, but your Kings Island stories. Um, you know, did you meet your, your spouse or your boyfriend, or do you have a fa fantastic memory? You have a first memory, Don, what should they do with their stories? If you want to send an email to me at uh, Don Helbig at theme parks by Don.com, make sure in the subject line, you hit the story for TT in that subject line. So I know to separate it from other emails that I get, uh, get a ton of, ton of junk mail. So I just want to make sure that, uh, you know, I, I find all of your stories and uh, just kind of, you know, share why Kings Island means, you know, whatever it does to you, whether it's, you know, you, you met your spouse there, um, you know, first rides, first job, whatever it might be, um, just share those stories with us. And if you want to include some photos, you know, we'll drop those in as well. And we love hearing everyone's Kings Island stories because Kings Island has meant a lot to Ryan. It's meant a lot to me. And we love hearing what it means to you as well. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we love to hear your stories and thank you once again for sharing with us, uh, Miss Lisa, but we'll be right back with the listener questions. First listener question, Marta S from Westchester, Ohio. Winter fits igloo sound nice, but do you guys think they're worth the price? That's a good question. I, I want to hear your take before I rant about this. Repeat the question. Again. Winterfest Winterfest igloos. They seem nice, but are they worth the price? You know, um, they are nice inside, okay? 
And if you have, you know, four, five, six, up to eight people, you know, with you, uh, it's a nice place to go and warm up in that. But how much time are you really going to spend inside of an igloo? There's so much to see, so much to do at Winterfest, you know, that you want to be out in the park doing all of that rather than just sitting in an igloo all night. That's my opinion of it, that I wouldn't spend the money to do that because I'd want to be watching the shows. I'd want to be, you know, at the restaurants eating the food. I'd want to be riding some rides. I'd want to be getting some photos, maybe ice skate, you know, so there's just so much to see and do that I don't know, you know, that I would get enough time in that igloo to justify that. If it was a longer day, yeah. Uh, but just how short the day is, the night is, uh, for me, my my answer would be no. What about you, Ryan? Yeah, I kind of feel the same way. And you mentioned a longer day. If Winterfest were, uh, you know, a 10 to 10 thing, I could totally see that because that could be a good, uh, you know, meeting place. And that's where you keep your stuff and you guys go there to eat and, you know, reconvene there. Like, a, uh, like the, um, like at the water park, what are those called? The uh, cabanas. Cabanas. People use it for that. And like, you know, those are kind of expensive too, but you keep your towel there and your phone there and stuff and you feel like it's safe. And then you're like, oh, we're going to eat. So we, we will all meet at the cabana and you have your own private space. I, I could see it if it was an all day thing, but you're right. It's five hours. And if you want to do everything, then you don't really have even an hour to just sit in there and enjoy it. Um, I know that New Year's Eve is a little bit longer, and but they sell out on the first day for New Year's Eve. Yeah, that's the one night where, you know, okay, maybe because you're there till midnight. Yeah, so I, I don't think I would recommend it to each their own. You know, and it, it was just like the, the prestige pass. I remember, you know, preaching to everybody I could, like, why would you buy that after what happened the first year? Why would you buy that? And most people agree. They're like, okay, this was not a good value and I'm not going to do it again. But there were some people where it was kind of like, well, you know, my wife has a knee issue. She's not really disabled, so she can't park in handicap parking, but it's really convenient for us to park in, in preferred parking or, you know, with the stroller and stuff like that. Like it just makes all the sense in the world. Or I come here during my lunch break. So getting that one ride, you know, front of line or that get that one line skip pass makes it so I can ride Diamondback or the Beast or whatever during my lunch break. So people have their own reasons, but if you're just blatantly asking, is there something to the igloos that makes them worth it? Uh, unless you can identify it yourself, then I really just don't think so. Yeah, and they they are really nice mm -hmm. inside the igloos. You know, I had an opportunity to kind of, uh, you know, take a look at them when I worked there. Uh, so very very nice inside, nice and warm. You know, if you've got six or seven, you know, up to eight people, again, it's, it's you know it's comfortable in that. But again, how much time are you going to spend in there? Thanks, Marta. All right, next listener question, Alex G. from Hamilton, Ohio. He said, I've been taking an interest in Kings Island photography. Any tips to get really good photos for Instagram? That's a good question. It's a great question. Uh, I think if you're specifically looking to do Instagram, you know, and you're shooting on an iPhone or that, um, you want to use the portrait mode as often as you can, especially if you're doing food photos. You know, mm -hmm. use that or, you know, making sure that you're framing it up well. Uh, make sure that, you know, know where the sun, if you're out in the park, is when you're taking shots. So that's not, uh, you know, getting in the way, you know, or kind of hampering the shot a little bit. But I think that would be the thing I would suggest is, you know, just making sure that you're using it, you know, everything in portrait mode if you're doing it for Instagram. Yeah, there are two things that come to mind for me. Um, if you're doing it on a phone, I know the iPhone has this. I assume Android does too. But there is a square resolution that you can use. Um, and I believe yeah. that in, does Instagram still do a square resolution or are they, they got them. There's still one on there that I, let me check mine see if I have that. Uh, well, I, I know that the iPhone has it, but I don't know if Instagram still does it, but I believe they do. Um, yeah, most of mine, I don't use it for, um, you know, specifically trying to do Instagram myself. Uh, I have, no, I just have portrait on mine. Okay. Well, um, well, it'll, you just have to have it in mind if your phone doesn't have like a, a square, uh, resolution. But the other thing is Google the rule of thirds. So the rule of thirds is, uh, like the most yes. basic photography principle. 
And in long story short, in layman's terms, it's you want to have something interesting in each, like split the photo into thirds and have something interesting in each part or something balancing each part. Um, you can find some really good examples of what that is online. But uh, as opposed to, you know, taking a picture of Diamondbacks going into the splashdown, you should take a picture of Diamondback going into the splashdown, but there's the the bush on the right and then the splashdowns in the middle and then the train yes. on the left, you know? So you want to do that sort of stuff just so your, your photos take more of a story. It's more of a story than it is of just an object. Yeah. That's a great you know? question. Yeah. That's a really good question. So, uh, yeah, Kings you. Island lends itself to some great photo opportunities, doesn't it, Ryan? Oh, it really does day and night. It really does. Um, you know, the Eiffel tower is just a fantastic photo opportunity. I love kind of standing towards like the base of one of the legs and just shooting up towards the top. That's a photo I feel like everybody at some point has had as the background of their phone. You know, if you grew up in the Cincinnati area for some time at least. Mm -hmm. Cool. Hey, great question, Alex. Uh, we want to see your photos. So tweet them at us at tower underscore topics. And we'd love to see what you got. But I'm Ryan Sir along with Don Helbig. And this is Tower Topics.